What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome hello, to the hello. first episode of this new new venture that I'm going into. A new gaming podcast. Film I guess we call it adventure. Yeah, we ambitious, call it, but... we, can, we can call it a venture, right? <laughs> I like having that idea about it where, you know, it's going to keep evolving in the future. And we're going to keep investing in it. Well, it's going to be forward. fun. Um, we're going to cover a lot of great things on this podcast, but obviously we always have those ideas about where we want to go first. Let's go with one of my favorite games of all time and start with God of War. Right? Absolutely. And we're going to talk about where it's going, what we, what we think is going to happen in Ragnarok. Um, what are we expecting to see? Because obviously Santa Monica, everyone over there, they're geniuses with their mythology and how they weave it in and out. But um, I got a special guest here for the first time. We're hoping we co-host this thing going on going forward in the future. Yeah, Brendan. So. Hello, hello, <laughs> Brendan here. Nice to uh, meet you all, even though I guess this is the first time. I'm excited to be here. Happy to talk uh, God of War. This is a game that I have played probably about, I, I, I want to say five times, maybe four. I don't remember how many times, but I think I've played it through like four or five times about. And not to mention, I love Norse mythology. So this is a very fun to topic for me. Definitely happy to have you on here, man. Um, but. You know what, let's get right into it. How close do we think Ragnarok is after the first game? Father? What? Did something change? The forest feels different. Mm. Everything is different, boy. Try not to dwell on it. Yes, sir. Right, so the game just ended. Um, you walk back to your house in the end. Mm -hmm. And you, you go to sleep for a little bit and huge thunderstorm comes out of nowhere. Bam, Thor's at your front door. Um, how close from this point do you think Ragnarok is to coming? So from that point specifically, it's about like three to four years, I would say. Because at that point, basically, Ragnarok is triggered by the death of Baldur in both the game and Norse mythology. So basically, Baldur's dead. And um, I think it's it's it's... Fimble Winter starts after that, and after Fimble Winter comes Ragnarok, and Fimble Winter lasts about three years, they say. So, mm -hmm. and I know that Ragnarok, the game, picks up at the end of that three years. Hence, you know, we see um, Atreus is aged up a little bit, um, and from there, I imagine obviously Ragnarok hasn't happened yet, but you know, it's going to, I imagine, play out those events into some degree uh, mm -hmm. by the end of the game. So, I imagine, but from the point from you know you, you're talking about, I would say like three to four years. Okay, because because uh, we all know Santa Monica. Um, when they had that little blurb they sent out to everybody just speaking on um, on Ragnarok when they released the trailer, um, they pretty much said that they're ending the Norse mythology chapter with this uh, game. They mean war. Aye. How do you... This one I know too well. Oh. So yeah. they're, they're wrapping it all up in terms of Norse mythology, this game. We, sad because I, I wish they wish they could have done a third one, but I understand because I know uh, what is it? Corey Barlog said that um, they didn't want to do a third one because each game took like five years to make. So like they don't want to take a, a franchise, you know, three, you know, a trilogy to take 15 years. Yeah, it's just, you know, exactly. ridiculous. So really quick, I wanted to run through um, the first game. Quick rundown. All right. So it starts pretty much with the death of Faye, right? Yeah. In the beginning, I guess upon her death, she it was part of the process where Kratos had to go around their house and cut down all these marked trees, right? Yeah. Um, actually, interesting point about that. Did you know that all those marked trees, I didn't actually realize this until recently, that the, the reason why she marked all those trees to cut down was because those were all the, they were marked with that symbol from her hand, which was actually causing a protection spell, blocking all the mm -hmm. uh, Aesir gods from even realizing that they were hiding out there. So once mm -hmm. he cut them all down, it broke the spell. They came looking for them, which kind of forced Kratos to take atreus on the journey because he was obviously very reluctant to go on this journey because he really you know kind of not really rejected but you know kind of didn't have a good relationship with his son Sorry. what are you doing now his guard is up only fire only fire when i tell you to fire i'm sorry do not be sorry be better 
find it. Find it. Links. They left a lot of questions, even down to the realms we couldn't explore. And not only are they adding all the realms, but then now there's going to be Thimble Winter versions of all these realms. There's a misconception out there that Thimble Winter is all just, oh, there's going to be a winter version of everything. That's not the case. Thimble Winter. Yeah, yeah I don't think affects, so. It affects all the realms differently. So that's where the that's where the cool factor is going to be. It's waiting to see what it is that they're going to come up with. How are they going to, you know, adjust the the mythology to to their game? But it's so Skull and Hati. The whole thing is like in the, in Norse mythology that Skull and Hati they're uh, they're both eternally chasing the sun and they're the equivalent of like the sun and the moon in a sense. Mm -hmm. And once they finally catch them, that's the symbol the Ragnarok has started. Um, is when Skull and Hati finally catch the sun and the moon. Um, and in the game, there's a conversation you have with Mimir while you're traveling, um, where he tells you that Odin has actually kidnapped Skull and Hati and um, has had them because he thought, you know, it gave him control over Ragnarok, basically. Yeah, and but, once, Ragnarok. But, but once you, um, obviously, once you kill Baldur, um, from, what I, from what I've read, uh, Ragnarok was actually meant to happen uh you know hundreds of years later like the the, the death of balder the, because kratos and atreus you know killed balder and changed some events um it actually causes ragnarok to happen like a hundred years earlier than it was than it was supposed to in that you know in their god of war mythology um and so now this is you know now that that happened it also got um it started fimble winter and skull and hati got free so they're I, we would imagine they got free and they're going to they're you know get to the sun and moon in some sense i don't know how they're going to be in the game but i imagine they're going to be in the game to a degree and obviously i imagine fenrir will too but i don't know how they're going to work that all in again fenrir you know has to be yeah he, he has, has to, be. to be and he's especially he's with tier being in the game he's the hidden gem i think of the game so in yeah. 2018 right i think the hidden gen was the blades of chaos i don't oh, think yeah. anyone in their first playthrough is expecting to find the blades of chaos we're hiding right there under under the board the floorboards where Kratos was telling Atreus, hey, never go down there. Yeah. But then Atreus says, oh, I saw them already. Like, you know, a few a few months back, I went down there and I, and I saw them. He's like, yeah, some old and, blade, so what? <laughs> yeah, like, he's like, so so what about him? But I think that's going to be the gem because they're really, they even, they, they revealed Anger Boda. You know, yeah. they revealed so many things in that trailer. But, but there's like every... not a lot they can like quote unquote reveal if you're doing a Ragnarok story. If you can just read the Norse Ex myths, you're gonna you know exactly, what I mean? exactly. No but I just want to see what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I get, I get you. <laughs> I want, I want to see, I want to see what that thing looks like because the key is how they're gonna subvert what we already know. You know, that, that's that's that's, that's the what's key. Great. How are they gonna weave Kratos and Atreus into these storylines in the genius way? Exactly, because Cause they, you, you know, they're capable. You know, it's funny that uh, what is it? Um, I know because like because you know, Loki is Atreus and their mom is actually Laufey. That would make by default make Kratos um, the character Faurbati. I think that I'm pronouncing that right. Far Faurbati mm -hmm. in uh, Norse mythology, and he's not really he's not really described much at all beyond just being the father of Loki and being um, just like a, like a savage fighter. So it kind of kind of fits, you know, why okay. they were able to make Kratos kind of be that equivalent. You know, um, right. but they don't really say much about him in actual North mythology, so they can do a lot with him. So I think, you know, I think that was a good decision. I was born a god, and so were you. Um, can I turn into an animal? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things when it comes to Loki that we have to think about in terms of how he's going to act. Because at the end of the day, this is a different Loki, right? This is a Loki that's been thinking he's Atreus his whole life. And then yeah. he now he's Loki all of a sudden. It's not like he's, you know, Loki from birth where he's building up these habits of mischievous, you know, deeds and things like that all through yeah. his life. And then he just coming into his own. No, he's practically a baby again because now he has to start from square one. I wanted to go into the next topic of Atreus being named Loki doesn't necessarily mean he will be Loki in a yeah. sense because at the end of the day, it's this this game is is gonna weave the story a little bit. And Atreus said that he prefers Atreus. He doesn't necessarily yeah. prefer the name Loki. Or I think it was the end of the game in 2018, um, God of War 4, where he says, uh, I'm happy you guys named me Atreus. You know, he kind of mentions like, you know, I'd rather I'd rather have that name anyways. Loki's kind of weird. Yeah. So um what do you what do you think about that? I think I mean I personally think he'll probably keep going by uh atreus and kind of just like refer to 
you know, Loki as like what he is like prophesized to be maybe, you know, in a sense. I actually was going to say that um, I think i think there might if if based on the context of like this whole like story i think there's a good chance i don't know why or how but atreus could have to kill kratos i had hoped to spare you being a god it can be a lifetime of anguish and tragedy that is the curse Because you gotta, you gotta think all throughout the entire God of War series, um, and even if I'm like just thinking on, on Greek mythology, and it, because of it, um, you know, the cycle of patricide is like you know sons killing their fathers. It's like it, throughout his family is a whole big thing. Because think, Kratos killed Zeus. Zeus killed Kronos, his father. Kronos killed his father, Uranus. So Uranus, when he was getting killed by his son, cursed Kronos um, for the cycle of patricide to infect his entire family for all for eternity. So that's you know why it keeps happening over and over and kratos killed zeus and on and on and on you know so i think if that unless the curse was broken somehow that which we don't really know about i mean i know the end of the game when he was you know when he kills balder and he's like oh you know we have to be better we have to break the cycle of you know kids killing their parents um you know he he maybe i don't know if that in some way metaphorically broke that curse but i don't know that's just a thought that i've had you know because of the cycle right. of patricide being such a uh in you know ingrained it's a, it's thing yeah ingrained thing in the, in this fabric of most of these mythologies i mean i guess we could go with him following his own path um but i feel like yeah i agree with you at some point it might not be in his hands yeah. i feel like maybe something's gonna happen where he's controlled or influenced in some way and then he has to end up you know killing kratos yeah or just like or, the events whatever they may yeah. be make lead it to make you know even out of mercy who knows it. right so it seems like it's out of mercy because if you see the way that Atreus is holding Kratos, it's kind of holding someone who you love yeah. while they're dying, as opposed to standing over them while he's dying, or maybe if he was, you know, choking them and he was dying. No, he was holding Kratos as if he was a dear, you know, a dear loved one. I mean, just knowing we're gods makes me feel so much stronger. Maybe you feel a little too good right now. With power comes a big choice, lad. You can either serve yourself or put your godhood in the service of others, like Tyr did. Yeah, favor because we know that we know that Tyr at least somehow was able to travel between exactly. um, the different realities, you know, the different pantheons of the gods. So there was that one scene where they show Tyr and all the different pantheons of the gods, like they showed the Japanese. They had like Egyptian. They had like uh, native, mm -hmm. like I think native uh, gods, like Aztec, Mayan. Like to travel. Tyr believed the mind, not might, was key to preventing war and chaos. And he also knew visiting other cultures would give him perspective staying in one place could not. While Odin always hoarded knowledge, guarding it jealously, Tyr was open and sharing with his learning and his wisdom. For this, mortals adored Tyr, showing their love by bringing him gifts the world over. So, whatever happened to Tyr? Odin came to regard him as a threat to his rule. He suspected Tyr of collaborating to aid the giants instead of helping to steal their secrets for the Aesir. Same thing he accused me of, frankly. Though in Tyr's case, I believe he was right. You think Tyr was helping the giants? I do. He felt responsible for the suffering visited upon them by Odin. I suspect he had something to do with helping them cover their tracks. The missing Jotunheim town. Correct. Whatever happened to it, I believe it could only have been done with Tyr and the giants working together. They, they really took Tyr and they really used him in a great way to to kind of allow the story to pass through him whenever they really really wanted to alter it right mm -hmm. so how big of a role do you think he's going to play in ragnarok are we going to see him early are we going to see him in the middle maybe towards the end um is he someone that we find literally at the end of the game and then we just go to egypt and book <laughs> like <laughs> I, I mean i i personally i think tear is going to be instrumental to the game i mean especially because um i think the fact that alone that they showed him alive in the trailer is like a reason to believe that he'll be uh debuted you they know should have kept that they shouldn't have put that in the trailer Just yeah but the fact that they that did makes there. me think that they're treating it as nonchalant so he's probably going to show up in the beginning of the game you know what i mean probably probably maybe I, not the very I, beginning but like you know at least like the first act well, I mean, they mentioned, I, I think, in, in the trailer, at some point, it becomes all about Tyr. It becomes that they have to find Tyr first, and then they end up finding him, and it ends with, will you join us? And he stands up, and he's, like, two feet taller than Kratos. And yeah. Like, what the fuck? Guy's huge. <laughs> so so, so you, you're you in the, in the wave that he's going to come in early. He's a huge factor in the game. 
and he's just he's probably going to be maybe even a companion. Do you maybe think potentially him as a playable character? Oh, I mean that'd be dope, but I doubt it. But that'd be awesome. Maybe maybe like for like a segment, but I doubt. I don't know. I don't think so. I would so. love. I would love if Santa Monica went the WB Games route with Batman. You know how they did Arkham City and Arkham Knight, where you can kind of like switch between you know other playable characters, even DLC with other playable characters. I would love if they just had like you know like a like a Balder DLC where you can yeah. just use Balder and all his moves, you know, or even like a Freya DLC. You know, you could kind of go into the history with her and and Odin in the beginning, you know, before everything really went down and she was exiled um, to the forest. So it's like, you know, there's so many things you could wish these guys would do. Um, Angraboda is obviously for 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 those of you out there listening to this or maybe taking popping in real quick. Um, Angraboda is a love interest of Loki um, in Norse mythology. She's a few things, um, but most of all, she's a love interest. And it seems that she's going to be a love interest of, of, of Atreus in this game because she's the same age as him. So um, she's young in this game. Yeah. And she seems to be right around the same age as, as Loki and um, obviously seems to lead them in a, in a direction where she's going to help them tremendously. Um, I have big hopes for Anchor Boda. I really feel like she could be a really big, nice twist in the story in terms of what, she, what role she plays. But um, how big do you think she's going to be? Like, do you think she's going to maybe be a manipulator of sorts and maybe convince Loki or Atreus in a way that Kratos is bad and maybe affect the story that way? Or I mean, is she going to be good? I don't, I mean, I have no reason to think that right now. I mean, potentially if they want to like throw some twists in there, sure. But I think she'll probably just be, you know, I'll, I think my gut is telling me that she'll probably be introduced. You know, they're probably going to find her on like, <clears throat> on like Vanheim or something. And um, what I imagine is she's going to, like, you know, probably help teach Loki about him being a Jotun. Through that, you know, maybe they'll fall in love or something. And and there's has to be some – if they're going to, like, introduce, you know, obviously their children, you know, being, you know, Fenrir. Uh, they already introduced mm-hmm. Jormungandr. And if the, I don't know if they'll introduce Hel, the daughter. Um, mm-hmm. But they're going to have to introduce, you know, whatever – time travel mechanic they're using obviously at that point too and then if that's the case if there's time travel involved then you know that obviously opens leaves the door open for to explain how they have their kids come here why did you say tear felt responsible for what odin did to the giants there was an incident shortly after the forging of mjolnir when tear arranged a diplomatic meeting between odin and the giant kings well this was when the long war was young and victory was still a thing dreamed of and the jotnar might have tipped the balance between aesir and vanir Odin had persuaded Tyr that the hammer was merely a deterrent, a means to broker peace from a position of strength. Tyr was hopeful to convince all parties they would prosper best through peace. He knew the giants were deeply concerned about the hammer, a super weapon in hands they did not trust. But they trusted Tyr. Tyr always believed the best in people, and taking Odin at his word in his desire for peace, he brought the Raven King to Jotunheim. Uh, from there, things unraveled quickly. The giants anticipated Odin's trickery and exposed his true agenda to spy and steal their secret wisdom. With magic, they expelled Odin from their realm and cursed him never to return. Frustrated, Odin visited his fury upon the giants of Midgard. Thor unleashed Mjolnir's might upon any giant he could find. None could stand against the tide of slaughter that followed. And at last, it seems, with Tyr's aid, they retreated. The tower disappeared, no giants could be found in Midgard, and no man nor god has set foot in Jotunheim since. So I feel like, you know, you can look through everything that they're doing in terms of what they've shown us so far, and you can kind of see where the gaps are and where they might, that, all right, that's where they're going to fill in their own part, right? Yeah. One of them, I think, so happens to be the fact that Angra Boda was introduced as this teenage girl, mid-teens, right? Mm. Let's say 15, 16, same age. How old is how old is Loki, Atreus? In this I don't, game? I don't know. I don't remember if they really said how old he was exactly in the old gotta game. I know it's older than 11, 12, 15, but yeah, in the new game, he's probably, gotta be probably around probably he's probably like 15, 16 in the new game, I would say, probably in yeah. Ragnarok. Then again, I don't necessarily know how the years really work. Um, other than the fact that Thimble Winter is three years, right? Yeah. So that the, there's certain timelines that are that are permanent. So you can kind of gauge it off that. So let's just say he's 15, 16, right? Same thing with with Angra Boda. You can't just say they're going to pop on the screen and just start making kids. 
Yeah, no, exactly. Right? That'd be so. If you're going to introduce him now, do you maybe make it so it's not necessarily like, oh, they gotta have a baby, like they gotta do something? Maybe she Fenrir comes out of her energy wise and then just kind of forms, um, because of some type of event, or do we think like Fenrir is just gonna be completely, um, attached to maybe a different character in the story? Um, maybe he's attached to Kratos in a way, right? Um, maybe he's attached to um, a different part, which would then change Jormungandr in Hell. It would change who their mother is, right? So you can see, like, there's certain ways that they could adjust this thing. Yeah. So, but it's it's really confusing to look at sometimes. But the possibilities are just amazing. They could do that, but I mean, I think they've already kind of laid the groundwork enough to at least set up at least Jormungandr as def- definitively being Atreus's kid, because there was that one. Uh... Mm-hmm. There was that one scene, I don't know if you remember from the game, there was that one time where I think Mamir like relays to you that like after speaking to the world serpent that he said that he recognizes Atreus. There's this one bit of dialogue where he's like, he's like, he just, he's like, uh, he just said that like, you know, the boy seems familiar. And uh, I thought I yeah. found that really funny because, you know, now you know, when you know that he's actually Loki, you know, it's like, oh shit, that's actually like, that's your dad, you know, like that. And yeah. like, obviously if they're sticking with him being his dad, it's not a, a stretch to think that Angry Boy is the mom. You know, I really don't know how they're going to introduce Fenrir. I don't know if, if they're even going to introduce Hell um but i mean because you got to think fenrir you know so much happens leading up to ragnarok that they, that they would have to either go back to like with with tier and tier and fenrir or just like glaze over or re-explain some other way because uh you know fenrir uh the whole thing with like fenrir being you know being bound by by odin and you know tear sticking his hand in the mouth to you know, getting his hand bitten off and all this stuff like being precursors to ragnarok you know that just have couldn't can't have happened unless, unless unless Fenrir somehow time traveled also, but they exactly. haven't explained that because they only explained Jormungandr, you know, time traveling because of his fight with Thor. So, you know, there's, it's, it's kind of, kind of a bit convoluted, but also like, I feel like they're going to have to figure it out in some way because that's such a major character to what they're doing that yeah. I feel like they can't leave him out. That's one of my concerns. I think that's one of my main concerns. One of my main concerns is that they're trying to jam too much into this one game. Right. Well, okay. But I just, I feel like they're, the fact that they said they want to wrap it up in this game, yeah, they said what fifty something hours of gameplay they want to have. Yeah, it's gonna be long. It's gonna, it's be, gonna long. be really it's gotta long. Be. So they want to jam as much as they can, but then again, how much can you jam? Yeah, you don't got a hundred hours of gameplay to wrap up all these storylines, right? So I don't think unless they really, which I, I believe in them, but unless they really nail this, this this is a huge risk trying to yeah. just wrap all this up in one game. Oh, definitely, definitely. But I mean, I have faith. I mean, the, the Eric Williams, who's who's directing this game, um, you know, he, him and Corey Barlog have both kind of like traded on and off direct, you know, game directorial duties on and off the whole God of War uh, series, really. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I trust, I trust him enough. And also, he was instrumental in like working with Corey, uh, of course, you know, yeah. on the God of War twenty eighteen. Even though he wasn't credited as a uh, game director, he was still instrumental in, in creating the game in a way. So. I mean, I guess, I guess my main problem also is the pacing of both of the games. So the first game, I feel like Corey was given um, all this, this whole platform, this whole canvas to kind of craft the story with Eric Williams, right? Mm -hmm. Um, They were given all this money from Sony to say, hey, look, you guys have free reign, go ahead and do anything you need. We're behind you. So I feel like Corey had this whole game to start the story, right? But for me, the first game feels like the first part of a trilogy. Yeah. I, I can't help but feel like the first game was the first part of a trilogy. So to hear that they're now going to put the next two parts into one game is where the concern is for a few people. Like, hey, you know, they might not nail it, but I think yeah. from what I've seen so far, it looks amazing. And I trust that they'll do it right. I just really wish there was three. I really wish there was three games. <laughs> yeah. I would have loved it. But, you know, well, take two. And as long as they're going to go to Egypt, after or they're going to go to japan or as long as they we, we know that they're going to go in a good direction after ragnarok um then obviously it doesn't matter because the story is just going to continue so as yeah. long as they don't focus too much on wrapping up all the loose ends and then making it feel rushed then this is going to be one hell of a game man one hell yeah, of a game 
I mean, I definitely, you know, I understand the concerns you, you know, you stated, and I, I definitely sympathize with those. I definitely wish there was a third game. Obviously, who won? And you know, this is a fantastic trilogy, and I love Norse mythology. I mean, you know, I played the shit out of um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla when that came out. Uh, you know, so I like, you know, all things included in that. I would love for them to stay in this world, but you know, I trust the team. I trust, you know, the direction they're going. Everything looks good so far. So, you know, like you said, I have no, you know, reason to doubt them so far. Um, you know, obviously, would love a third game, but you know, I'm happy with what we're getting anyway. Especially Actually, I mean, I get what they're saying, though. You know, 15 years for a trilogy is a lot a lot to ask. So, <laughs> so. You know, the oh, Sony yeah. studios are kind of all doing the same thing. They're making these games, they're coming out with them, and then they're keeping the sort of formula the same for the next game, just yeah. adding a few things. It's happening with Horizon. Yeah, Horizon Forbidden West looks great, but at its core, it still looks like Zero Dawn. Yeah. So, um, but they've added a few mechanics. You know, they've added the, the flying. They've added, obviously, better fluid animations, but... Some of the flowers still don't move when you move through them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like some of the engine things are still still the same, but they're moving on to, I guess, more power. So we're gonna yeah. have to wait until we really get to see what these visions of these companies are like, because they're still kind of catering to the old generation. So yeah, they're still physics. Let, that can kick yeah, out. Let, let them let them kick ass with Ragnarok for right now. And trust me, I I believe that when it comes to that next game after. Whether it's that that triple A sci fi game that that Corey wants to make, yeah. or if it's that if if it's another God of War, we know that when when all these companies, all these studios really take advantage of the PS Five, who knows what we're gonna see. This Valhalla is it within hell? Oh no no, Valhalla is part of Asgard. Only the worthy dead go there. The warriors who die in glorious combat. Hell is for those who die in dishonor. Criminals. Aye, and those dead of disease, mishap, age. It is dishonorable to grow old. Well, never too late to go out fighting, I suppose. I, I, I think I'm excited to see what they think of when it comes to Valhalla, if they do present it, and then also you got Asgard. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like Valhalla will find its way into 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 that would be cool if they should. like an add on like maybe you go in and fight waves of enemies there or something. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I mean, Asgard definitely has to. If they said all nine realms are going to be in it, then the Asgard, Asgard has to be. Got, there's um, so much pressure. But if game. there's Valhalla, that'd be sick. I don't know how they would do that, but that'd be that'd be cool. Like a horde mode kind of thing, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's it's the heaven for warriors, right? How much pressure is there on that first fight? Oh, a lot. I think there's a lot of pressure because I think because of that, the way, you know, so many people reacted to that little quote unquote secret ending to the game. I think there's a lot of pressure to see that pick up and have it be satisfying for all these, you know, five years of build up people thinking what's going to happen. Who was he? He knew me. Did he know my past? How did they find me after all of this time? Faye, what do I do? Our son is not ready to carry your ashes to the top of the mountain. You know what I mean? That's a lot I mean, it's, of anticipation. Go, go through, go through. Let's go back, right? Go, go back to that first game, right? Opening sequence, the Hydra, the three-headed Hydra. One of the best opening sequences ever of any game. Yeah. At that time, there was nothing that could match that. That was just bliss, right? I don't know how they did it on PS2, but they did it. You go to God of War 2. The first fight, you're fighting the Rhodes, the, the Colossus of Rhodes, being controlled by Athena, right, with her powers. Mm -hmm. And then you fight Zeus right there. After that fight is done, Zeus sends you down to hell by stabbing you. Great opening. One of the best openings yeah, fantastic. Uh, up until that point, right? You go through, you go through down the list because obviously there's many PSP, you got a war games. Um, you go through all of them, they all have amazing openings. And then you got a God of War three, and you got Poseidon as yeah. the first fight. I, I, I still, I still want to play through that fight. Every time I see anyone playing it, I want to go through, go back because I want to play. I want to poke out Poseidon's eye. That is a dope fight. That's definitely it's, the it's one just... scene in that game that's like burned into my brain, like completely. I wasn't prepared for that beatdown scene for Poseidon in that game. 
I wasn't prepared, right? So now you go through all three of these games, the main games. And even Balder and, and God of War 2018, and, the same thing. Oh, exactly, right? That lived up to it because honestly, I thought he was a wimp. And they, they really sold the fact that he was not strong enough to touch Kratos until he was like, okay, my turn. And yeah, he just that was awesome. You. Because they actually edited that in the trailer. They made it seem like he flew like that because he was hit by a troll. Right, that's right. By, by the tree of a troll, they edited it to get hit into the house and he goes flying. But really, it was bald the whole time. So the amount of pressure that comes with creating a fight against one of the most iconic mythology characters anywhere, right? You got Zeus from Greek mythology, probably the most iconic. You also got Hercules a little bit, but you know, yeah. in terms of worldwide renown, obviously everyone knows who Zeus is, right? And when it comes to Norse mythology, as much as people think about Loki or Odin or any of the other characters from Norse mythology, everyone remembers Thor, right? So this is the fight. There's going to be a fight with Odin, but in terms of when people pick up this game and they start playing, this is the fight. Good ball. It's gonna immense, be a game opener. Immense amount of pressure for this fight to be good, for it not to be too quick, for it not to be too long, for the mechanics of it to not be so blocky like it was when you fought Boulder. Yeah, yeah, right? you don't want that as quick much time. as that first fight against Boulder was amazing. The fourth one was not. The fourth one was kind of just a little boring. The cutscenes and everything was amazing, but I really want them to incorporate more uh, gameplay into yeah. the the boss fights yeah i agree you don't want just like tap the triggers like you know dodge exactly. this guy punch him not just, you know exactly. whatever but then they got the verticality right you can attach your your blades of chaos to the to the top floor of anything and you fly up there you rock at them you push them off the edge and then you jump back down and you smash in the blades of chaos now so they added a bunch of different things so obviously i feel like that comes in probably from the fight with thor it's probably sometime when you first start using things like that yeah um but it's just going to be amazing to see what they come up with because Kratos against Thor, god damn! That Leviathan axe against Mjolnir. Mjolnir, what wins? Oh man, I mean, I hate to say it, but I would think Mjolnir. Like Kratos, remember, yeah. the weapon is only held. The power in the weapon is only held back by the. Mind. Yeah, if, if that's the case, then yes, I would like to say the Leviathan axe. But I don't think if this if this fight is going to start the game off, unless they do it, you know, unless they just let you start off the game with a fully upgraded axe and then you fight and then somehow it fucks it up and then it goes back to being you gotta re-upgrade it. I don't, I don't really know. All right. So, I mean, I think we covered we covered a bunch of things when it comes to this game, obviously, right? Santa Monica's got a lot on their plate. Um, they have a lot of things that they've already probably went through, right? In terms of development, I'm sure they've gotten the story all done and, and put to the side. Maybe they change up a couple things. Um, yeah, they definitely have the story done. Things. But the story's done. The kind of the, I'm sure the animations are done. The, the acting performances are done. Right now, they're probably around post production. Just that obviously takes a very long time. Do we see this game in 2022? I I I would hope so. I would hope maybe the end of 2022. I feel like it's so ambitious. These companies sometimes the studios they come out and they give these these years. Um, when everyone saw 2022, we were shocked. Right? Yeah, like we were like, wow, that's. That's early. Then again, 2022, is, it's the whole year, right? They're not giving you a specific time, but it's still, that's that's this year. We're here now. And it hasn't been that much time. It's been three years. Granted, they already developed all the, the character models and things like that, and they've already thought of what the story is. They've already hashed out the transition from Greece to, to Norse mythology. So now they just have to work on new stuff. So it's quicker, but still, I was shocked. I, I, I'm shocked if we see it in 2022, late 2022, I would say, second half. Um, yeah. But I'm looking at this to be a 2023 release. Yeah, I definitely, on the side of, on the, you know, air on the side of caution, I could definitely see like, you know, an early, you know, maybe March 2023, maybe, you know, to be on air on the side of caution. But I mean, hey, if it's released like holiday 2022, I'll be happy. I'm just happy that Sony is now, you know, uh, porting over some of its games to PC. That's nice because I, you know, recently acquired a new uh, a new uh, PC rig, so it's nice to be able to get some of those games on welcome here if I want to. Welcome to the master gaming race. Oh yeah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, Ghost of Tsushima is next on that list of games. That, yeah, that'd games be great from PS4 because that game on PC needs to happen. 
it's a great direction for Sony going forward. But it was great talking about God of War with you, man. You're you're super knowledgeable. You yeah, know absolutely. All this Thank crap you. About Norse mythology that I know people out there are gonna be like, wow, this dude knows his stuff. I mean, so, hey, this is great. You know, I, I have all this shit just stuck in my head and he's got to get out somehow, right? So this is great. great. This was pandemic done to everybody. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is the first episode of Filmic Gaming Podcast. Um, we're going to definitely try to do this thing weekly. Uh, my name's Chris. This is Brendan on the other side of the mic. And yep. um, thank you guys for listening. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. Yep. See you soon. Peace out. Wow. So nice. We made it.